Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D dash oracle.com. That's Ord, O R D dash oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, I sent you over some charts. Uh, I, I have them. I have time to go through all of them, but. We have time um, to go through all of them. This market's a trip, Tim, no doubt. Let's see what you got going <laughs> here. All right. Chart number one, um, uh, the bottom window is a 63-day average of the trend. Yes. And uh, it's, it's current. And I marked it. Anyhow, that bottom, uh, I got it marked kind of light pink on the it's bottom. It's in the pink. The yes, I can see that. Day, yep. Yeah, 63-day trend gets down around one or lower. Uh, usually, it's kind of means trouble for the market. Okay. And the uh, uh, red lines and and pink areas are the times when that uh, six three day trend was below one. And we're still there. Um, it hasn't really moved much, even though the market's backed off. A uh, trend a couple of days did get kind of high, uh, but not enough high enough to really suggest we're near a low. Uh, this is like an near midterm low. Okay. So I'm thinking we're going to kind of build some sort of a, I don't think a big decline's in the making here, but we're not really, really uh, ready to rally yet uh, until we start getting more panic than what we've seen. So that's, I, I think we may be here for another month, you know, in this vicinity or a little bit lower. You're going to drive and, people uh, crazy. <laughs> you what? I said, you're going to drive people crazy. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's going to drive everybody crazy. You know, once our panic starts showing up, then we start looking a little bit more bullish. So let's flip to chart two. Okay. So that was the chart one. That was the six three day average of the trend. This takes it down to uh, the bottom window is a five day trend, and the next window up is a ten day trend. And I marked the times with blue uh, lines. The times when both those got in bullish territory for the five day trend, it needs to get up close to one point five, and for the ten day trend, it needs to get up to around one point two, and. It I took this chart back, what, three years or better. And uh, you can take it back as far as you want. It's, it's, uh, the story is always the same. So we're not even near uh, bullish levels on the five-day and ten-day. Both of them are close to one. One's a little bit less. So we need to really start seeing some panic. And panic forms when the trend gets above uh, actually 1.2, you know, higher the better. Right. Uh, so we, let me just, so, I just want to reiterate what you're saying here. Because of, between the first chart and the second chart, right, that you're specifically saying that there hasn't been enough panic yet, so you might even not get a bounce. Is that, would that be correct? Yeah, yeah, I thought we'd, I tried to actually get long here a few days ago or a week, week and a half ago. And we did have a, a, a couple of trend readings that were decent. I thought, okay, that's good for a bounce. Market didn't even bounce. Okay. Um, and that's a good sign that that you're going to need a lot more panic to get this market uh, yes. to bounce even. Right. And even uh, a couple of days ago, last Friday, you know, the, the, I think that the closing trend on that day was 0 0.77. The uh, market did go up for one day. Uh, we're back down again a little bit today. But uh, you're going to need a lot more, you know, people throwing in the towel type readings and the trend and the ticks on the close to really get a bounce going. You know, it's so, interesting there, Tim, is that this is a dangerous time of the year for this to happen, too. It really is. You know what I mean? Well, you know, seasonality wise, you know, this is of all the quarters to be in. Yeah. The third quarter, which we're in right now, is the worst quarter of the year. Right. No, that's my so, point. That I mean, I remember, you know, specifically. Like, if this is going to be a razor blade cut on the way down, little by little, you drift, you drift, you drift, and then all of a sudden, you get a couple big downdrafts, you know, four or five weeks from now, then, then it really, I mean, I, I remember one, we were on the air, my God, that, and that's, that's when the big turnaround came. It was a razor blade cut for like six weeks in a row, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it just never stopped. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that could be here, too, because right now, you know, you're not seeing any great signs of, of, of panic. You know, people are kind of buying the pullback, seems like, and, and um, you know, they, they get into bounce and nothing really happens, and they start hitting new lows. And Right. So, and, folks, yeah, would that yeah, would happen there? Now, it's probably going to be, you know, I don't know exactly when the bomb's going to be, but 
you know, a lot of times it's September, maybe October. Right. You know, because, August is almost over. So right. things so, could get really nasty in the next four or five weeks or whatever. No, I'm with you. But, because last Friday, when you just brought up the aspect of the trend being at 0.73, right? We shouldn't have got that because that's saying everyone's buying it again, right? Yeah, they were, yeah. They were buying it, right. Right, exactly. You know, they had a, you know, one in front of it, and right. you, you may have got a decent bound, but that's yeah. 0.77 done, you know. Yeah, that, you what that means, bounce, folks, no, but you're not going to get anything worth. I mean, that's about as bullish as so. you can get, but it's bearish. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's bearish. You know, right. if you ever do the statistics on, on the trend, I, I forgot what it was. I think it's up. Uh, advancing issues divided by yeah. declining issues divide that by up volume divided by down volume. Right. And so you do all that rigmarole and you figure it out. And basically what it says is we got, you really want volume going into the down stocks. That, that would, that what pushes the trend up. Yes. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, you need to reach an oversold level. People get, uh, get up and that transfers, I guess, the, the dumb money selling to the smart money who will be buying or something. I don't know how that No, no, listen, works, I, but... I totally understand what you're saying. And, folks, it's it's one of these deals. So let's picture that we've come down, we've come down, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, everyone's saying, hey, I'm not scared. I'm going to go in there and buy, hand over fist. And it's like that wrecks the idea that you can come into a low. That's what, that's the bottom line. A point seven seven wrecks the idea that you're into a low. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty intense, right. man. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's pretty intense. But we'll we'll be talking sometime, you know, probably in the next uh, couple, three, four weeks, or whatever it is. And people will be dead scared on your program, and they right. and they should be, and along with us, right? But that's the time you have to step in. When it's always been my kind of experience is the ones I really have to grip my teeth to pull the trigger on yep. are usually the best trades. The ones I'm halfway confident in. Um, and I'm even on, the, you know, usually the opposite side of everybody because I do panic type indicators, sure. and those are the ones that usually don't work out the best. So, no, there's no doubt, so, man. And uh, yeah, it's it's this is the most deviant business in the world, man. <laughs> it really is. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. it takes a while to figure out how this whole, whole thing works. So yeah, um, we I mean, we can we got time to flip chart three. Yeah, we're gonna, and then I'm gonna keep you on the next segment anyway. But let's go. We'll flip the chart three. There we go. Okay. Right. This is not about panic, but it kind of measured momentum. And uh, this is the QQQ and the SPX were down uh, four days in a row going into last Friday. Yes. The SPY was actually up on a Friday, barely. So it was only down three days. So I, that's the reason why I put the QQQ down four days in a row here. Okay. And, and when it's down four days in a row, that predicts the market will be lower 73% of the time within five days. Man, just hold that, hold that thought, hold that thought right there. Folks, you stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 190. NASDAQ is off one. S&Ps are down 15 and a half. Tim and I are coming right back. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow Industrial is down 196. NASDAQ's off uh, 10. S&P's down 17 and a half. We're talking about our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, Tim, I believe I'm still dealing with... Uh, we have the chart up of the Qs still, okay? Yeah, chart of the Qs. Uh, anyhow, the QQQ and actually the SPX were down four days in a row going into last Friday. That predicts the market will be lower within five days, 73% of the time. So it's just kind of a statistic, this quantitative analysis. You can take this back, well, you can take it back as far as you want, and that's what you're going to come up with. So that's going to be this Thursday and Friday, right? Yeah. That's a that's a big number, 73%, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you really don't want to, you know, I guess if you're an Oz man, you really don't want to bet against it. Right. But anyhow, I, I circled, or not circled, but I squared out the times. Uh, over the last, uh, looks like I about see. A year. Yes, I see that. Yeah, the, yeah. The times that was down four days in a row, and uh, that there's a time in in May there it didn't work. Uh, but you know, it, it's seventy three percent of the time, so it did it, it did it right. So, but it coming off the top, we were down four days in a row. Then last Friday again, we're down four days in a row. So you get a bounce, and you know, there's seventy three percent chance you're going to move uh, lower. You know, this next low uh, could be important if, if we start seeing the trend to get 
kind of high. And if you look at today, you know, we hit over two today on the open, and we're at 1.27. So um, a lot of times when that trend starts to stay high on a decline, um, a lot of times you'll, you'll see kind of that trend continue. So, so let me ask you this. Since we, so you do take in, you know, when you look at the trend now, you also use the opening one? Well, I kind of watch it all day long. I got a graph, right. it, you know, and it hit two, and it kind of has been backing off since. But, you know, this morning, the market was it was kind of rallying it up. That trend was kind of high, which is kind of unusual. No, no, I agree. Um, I just know that years ago, you never used the opening trend. That's all I'm asking specifically. Right. Yeah, 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 you, you don't. It, it's kind of a worthless, but it, it's something I watch, I guess. Do I Okay, trade off that's of cool. No, no that's, I just uh, want to get it clear. Day. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, end, the closing, what, what, the whole market throughout the day, the closing trend kind of accumulates what has happened, you know. And so yes. you want everybody to basically throw in the towel. And the trend, high trend reading on the close kind of tells you that. You like that. Market, cool. Okay. Yeah. People are giving up. They're throwing in the towel and says, you get me out of this market. And, and that's what you want to see. Right. Because uh, the more that happens, the better it is on the bigger time frames, too. So... Um, are we heading for that type of uh, decline? We may. That's what I'm trying to say here. Yes. We already got the trend kind of high. Right. And uh, so we may be getting the throw in the towel type trend over the next several days. And um, so that could, you know, maybe lead for a bounce. I'm not sure it would be the final bottoms, but it could lead for a decent bounce. We'll have to wait and see. But mm-hmm. as it says right now, there's there's no signal here. Okay. So, and we should, you know, break new lows below last Friday's low. So, right. And maybe that's where people are going to start screaming. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. But whenever they start screaming, um, that's where the, the low is going to start to form. Right. That's so, the beginning of the yeah. low. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So, in, so in the coming days and weeks, you know, we should be able to pick out that low. Yeah. You know, nice. As, it, as it's happening. Right. So it'll be something to look forward to. That's for sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's, let's flip to, uh, I actually flipped to chart four. Okay. Uh, just going to briefly do this one. You know, the bottom window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume, and the chart goes back to 2012, and I listed the times in blue circles when this indicator fell below uh, 20. And in every case, when it fell below 20, the decline was done. Either the market flipped sideways, or in most cases it did, or there was a, 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 a rally of some sort. But um, so anyhow, so what I'm trying to say is stop the decline to the downside. So now, and, and folks, right now, five. this is the, the, the in case you're in your car listening to your radio and not watching on TV, we're looking at the uh, gold market right now. Go ahead, Tim. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. It's the GDX up-down volume yep. with a 50-day average. Uh, so every time it got below 20, going back to 2012, uh, the market most of the time flipped sideways. And so I listed the time on chart number five where we are. So I blew that chart up to show you how this, this indicator works. And it was pretty close what happened over the last, uh, oh, this, over the last couple of years because it's pretty rare to get the GDX up-down volume with 50-day average below 20. It happens maybe once, well, it happens once a year over the last three uh, three years. I it see. Once in okay. 2021, once in 2022, and now we got it in 2023. And the first time in 2021, the market flipped sideways for six months. If you notice where that blue line is, the market did go down a little bit before it flipped sideways. Yep. See, and 2000, same thing was 2022. It didn't get the exact bottom, but the market kind of drifted down sideways for a month or two, then flipped sideways. The exact same thing's happening here. Right. You pick the bottom, but uh, uh, it, it, in my opinion, is flipping sideways. We're not having a steep decline in the beginning here. We're end of the probably decline. We're probably, in my opinion, uh, setting at the lows, and either now we're start going sideways, or we start going up. Previous signals of this type, the market base for at least one month, if not 
uh, if not six months. That will definitely drive so everyone crazy. Sideways now for <laughs> including <months>. me. <laughs> signal came in first. Pardon? I said that will definitely drive everyone crazy, including me. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, the signal came in first of July. So basically we've been moving sideways here for two months. Okay. So when does the rally start? Well, the rally starts. Yeah, I didn't. Well, yeah, but the rally starts when this indicator closes above zero. Zero, right. Exactly. And I should have light and blue, uh, light blue that. I didn't do it. I no, I, I, we it. can see it. I, 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 put my, I put my cursor on it right now. I can see it, yep. Yeah, so, and we're right around uh, minus, what, seven or something, or five, or minus five right now. So we need close above zero, and that's when the impulse wave starts. So if you look at 2000, 22 bottom, the, the bottom happened in, or well, the signal happened in July. It flipped sideways, looks like, until about October. And finally, uh, beginning of October, it rallied all the way into the first part of the year. So it rallied quite a long time. Uh, but, um, and if you look in 2021, you got a signal in, it looks like about August, maybe. And, um, yeah, and it stopped moving higher in September. Yeah, and it came in, had a big rally uh, towards the first part of the 2022. Right. So, anyhow, my point is, as soon as that closes above zero, is when that impulse rally starts. Could be a month away, could be a week away. Um, we're in two months already. Could the sideways movement go another four months, maybe? And that's but, how uh, gold does move. Yeah, there's no doubt. Man. Yeah. Well, listen, Tim, it's always a pleasure. And, folks, don't forget to get a hold of Tim, Ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com. Tim, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Have a great one.